Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss argument and its validity. So let's define an argument. Let us consider a sequence of propositions called premises H1, H2, and up to Hn, and another proposition C, which is known as conclusion. So this sequence is called an argument. So here these are premises, and this conclusion C is based on all these premises. Now. This conclusion C follows logically from the set of premises H1, S2 up to Hn. If and only if the conjunction of all these premises tautologically imply this conclusion C. Or in other words, we can say H1 and S2 and up to Hn implies C. This is a tautology. So in this case, we say that the argument is a valid argument. Otherwise, we will say the argument is not a Valid argument. Let us take some examples to check the validity of arguments. Here, this is example number one. This is an argument, and we have to check its validity. So, here, this argument is given in in the form of sentences. So, first, we have to convert this in the form of proposition. So, what we can do? Look at this. So, look at this argument. If I go to Delhi, then I visit Parliament. So this is the first part that is H1. This is I go to Delhi. Second part H2. And here, therefore, this word is used. It means from here. This is conclusion. Sometimes it may be possible that the word therefore is not used, but you have to assume that the last part is the conclusion. So here, if you see, this is one proposition. This is another proposition. And first H1 is a compound proposition. Formed from these two propositions. So first, we have to assume all these. We have to assume all these propositions. So let P is I go to Delhi and Q I visit Parliament. Now I can write H1, H2, and conclusion in the term of P and Q. So H1, H1 is if I go to Delhi, then I visit Parliament. So this is P implies. Remember one thing that we have to assume the proposition which are basic, which must be atomic variables means we cannot break further. If I assume this whole as a simple P, then it will be very tough for me to further check. So we have to assume these propositions that cannot be break into further proposition. So this one P, I go to Delhi, Q, I visit Parliament. So these are the propositions for this example, and H1 is. This the compound proposition of these two. So here H1 is P implies Q. Now H2, I go to Delhi. I go to Delhi. This is P, and conclusion is I visit Parliament. So C, this is I visit Parliament is Q. Now this is the argument H1, S2, and C. Now we have to check whether this argument is a valid argument or not. So first. And a simple way is to construct a truth table. So we construct a truth table. P Q P implies Q. Here, look at this. P is in this one is H1 also, and P is H2 also, and this is conclusion. So if we make the truth table, then we we know that this is true, true, false. This is false. This is false. True. This is true. And false, false. This is true. Now we have to check whenever H1 and H2 for this argument to be a valid argument, we must have H1 and H2 tautologically imply C. It means whenever H1 and H2 is true, H1 and H2 is true means both of these propositions or premises must be true. So whenever this is true, conclusion must be true. So we have to check these cases. Where H1 and H2 both are true. So if you see in first case H1 and H2 both are true. In second case one is true, another is false. Here both are different. So only one case is there. So only one case is there where H1 and H2 both are true. And if you check in this case C is also true. So you can write a simple sentence that whenever H1 and H2 are true, that is in first case. Conclusion is also true. Therefore, H1 and H2 tautologically implies C. So this is the one way. 
to check the validity of an argument. Now another way you can make a truth table of H1 and H2 implies C and this must be a tautology. So H1 and H2, so first you have to calculate H1 and H2, H1 and H2. So look at this, this is true, this is false and this is false and this is false, false, true, false, this is false. So this is H1 and H2. Now find the truth values of H1 and H2 implies C. H1 and H2 implies C. So H1 and H2 this is implies C. So this is condition, this is conclusion. So true, true, this means this is true. Condition is true, conclusion is, uh, condition is false, conclusion is false, it means this is true. Again, this is false, but conclusion is true. So this is true. Uh, both are false in last case. So this is again true. So look at this, all values are uh, true. So it means this is a tautology. So you can write since H1 and H2 implies C is a tautology, it means H1 and H2 tautologically implies C and the argument is a valid argument. Now example 2, if I go to Delhi then I visit parliament, I do not go to Delhi therefore I do not visit parliament. So here propositions are C but H1 and H2, these two premises will be something different. Here H1 is the same. If I go to Delhi, then I visit parliament. So you can write it P implies Q. But H2, this is, I do not go to Delhi. It means this is negation of P. Now conclusion, therefore I do not visit parliament. If I do not visit parliament. So you can write it negation Q. So this is the argument. Now I will make two table to check the validity of the argument. So here I will write P, Q, then I need negation Q, P negation P, and I need negation Q, and P implies Q. So this is true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. Now negation P is false, false, true, and true. Negation Q is false, true, false, and true. Now P implies Q, P implies Q, true, true, this is true. True, false, this is false. In other cases, this is true. Now, if you look, this H1 is P implies Q. You can write it H1, H2, negation P. This is S2 and negation Q. This is conclusion. Now, we have to check the cases where H1 and H2 both are true. So, if you see, in first case, two, uh, these two premises are different. In second case, both are false. In third case, look at this. H1 is true and S2 is also true. And fourth case, H1 is true and H1, S2 is also true. So in these two cases, both the propositions or premises are true. Now, check the conclusion in these two cases. But in first case, if you see, the conclusion is false, while in fourth one, this is true. It means, in first case, in, you cannot say that whenever H1 and S2 are true, conclusion is true. Because in one case, conclusion is false. So you can write... Whenever H1 and H2 both are true, conclusion is not true in every case. Therefore, this is not a valid argument or H1 and S2. This uh, H1 and S2, this uh, proportion does not imply, does not tautologically imply the conclusion C. And if you wish to make the truth table for H1 and S2 implies C, so you can do it. So here, write the truth table of first P implies P implies Q. This is H1, H1 and H2. And S2 is and negation P. So this is H1 and H2. So this and this one. So this is false, 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 false. This is true and this is true. Now, Right, H1 and H2, H1 and H2, this implies C. So H1 and H2, this C is conclusion. So false, false, look at this is true. False, true, this is true. True, false, look at this, this is false. True, true, this is true. So this is the condition, this part is condition, this is conclusion. So in all cases, this is true. 
false to true, true false, this is false and true to true. Now if you check, this is not a tautology. It means you cannot say that H1 and H2, this tautologically implies C. It means this argument is not a valid argument. So to make two table of these two parts, your choice from there only you can uh, check all these cases and check whether the argument is valid or not. But if you wish to make the truth table of H1 and H2 imply C, so for better understanding, then you can make the truth table of H1 and H2 imply C and check whether this is a tautology or not. So this argument is not a valid argument. Now example 3. Look at this. If I go to market and buy a book, then I play football and dance. So number of propositions are there. So this H1 is basically a compound proposition. So first we have to identify all atomic variables. S2, I go to market and buy a book. Then H3, I sing a song and write a poem. Therefore I play football and sing a song. So we have to identify the different atomic variables or different atomic propositions. So first we identify and write propositions for all these. So let P, I go to market and Q, I buy a book, R, I play football, S, I dance and I go to market is already defined. I book is, I buy a book, this is defined. I sing a song, this is denoted by T and I write a poem, this is denoted by U. So now write H1. So H1 is if I go to market and buy a book. So this is condition. This is the conditional part. If I go to market and buy a book, it means P and Q. P and Q. This implies I play football and dance. I play football and dance. That is R and S. R and S. Now H2. S2 is I go to market and buy a book. I go to market and buy a book. P and Q. This is H2. Now I sing a song and write a poem. I sing a song and I write a poem. H3 is I sing a song and I write a poem U. So this is H3. And conclusion is C is I play football and sing a song. I play football is R. R. And I sing a song R and T. So this is conclusion. Now look at this. Uh, if I can make a truth table for all these variables, but it will not an easy task because too many variables are there. So I will try to prove this without constructing truth table. So we will start with H1, S2, and S3. Then we will show that it topologically implies C. So we can take any two parts in first or second. So if you check H1 and S2, you will see that you know that this P implies Q and P. This topologically implies Q and this rule is modus. As I told you, modus ponens. So here look at this. In place of P, this P and Q is written and in place of uh, this uh, Q, this R and S is there. So this Look at this, P implies Q, this is P. So it means in place of P, this P and Q is written. So basically, you can apply this with modest components here. So you can write from H1 and H2. From H1 and S2, we get H1 and S2, or you can write it H1 and H2. This, uh, you get this H1 and S2, this. Uh, we get this tautologically implies H1 and S2. You can write this tautologically implies H1. Here P and Q implies R and S and P and Q. So H1 and S2 you get R and S. Since you can write since since P implies Q and P tautologically implies Q using using modest points so h1 and s2 this implies r and s now s2 so h1 and s2 this implies r and s now we have to consider s3 also so if we consider h1 say this is 
number one equation number one h1 and h2 and h3 this topologically implies r and s and t and u now all these operators are and so you can apply the commutative law and you will get r and t this you can first apply associative law here look at this r and s and t so you can write it r and t and s and u so different associations are there i have directly written this because all these operators are and so you can choose any association you can calculate r and t first or s and u first so it's your choice so you can write this in this way so using using associative law now look at this this is if you assume this one as one this one as one so this is the form of p and q you know that p and q topologically implies p so here you can write this topologically implies r and t since you can write it since p and q topologically implies p so this topologically implies r and so here this is the conclusion from this set of premises h1 s2 and s3 so there is another way to prove the validity of argument if the number of variables are large then in place of an instead of just making a truth table because number of variables are if the number of variables are large then the truth table will be a very long table so avoid making truth table in these cases and check the validity of the argument using Uh, without constructing to table and utilize all these rules of uh, equivalences and implications so i hope that you got the concept of argument and valid arguments and you can check the validity of the argument validity of an argument